Jesus Please come fast Lazarus is sick Without your help He will not last Mary and Martha Watch their brother die They waited for Jesus He did not come They wondered why The death watch was over Buried for days Somebody said He'll soon be here The Lord's on His way Martha ran to him And then she cried Lord, if you'd been here You could have healed him He'd still be alive But you're four days late And all hope is gone Lord, we don't why you waited so long His way is God's way is His Not yours or mine And isn't it great When He's four days late He's still on time Jesus said, Martha Show me the tomb she said, Lord, you don't understand He's been there four days The gravestone was rolled back Then Jesus cried Lazarus come forth And somebody said He's alive, he's alive You may be fighting a battle of fear You cry to the Lord, I need you now But He has not appeared Friend, don't be discouraged Cause He's still the same He'll soon be here Roll back the stone And he'll call out your name When he's four days late And all hope is gone Lord, we don't understand Why you waited so long But his way is God's way Not yours or mine He's still on time Yes, my God is great He's four days late He's still on time Tell you what, it's uh, it's good to have Brother Mike with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, I tell you what, that's a beautiful song, and uh, that tells uh, that tells a whole lot. You know, uh, lots of times we're praying for God to do things in our lives, and uh, it seems like uh, we almost want to give up. Uh, but you know, when He does show up, it seems like He always shows out a little bit, doesn't He? So I'm just so thankful for that today. Uh, y'all, I want y'all to know uh, this week here, uh, it's been a long trying week. Uh, after, you know, Easter and, uh, you know, lots of things going on and uh, trying to figure out what the Lord kind of wanted me to speak on today. And uh, I tell you what, uh, what I want to talk about today is going to come out of St. Mark uh, chapter 9. Uh, we're going to be starting with verse 19 going through 24 about what I want to preach on today if it be God's will is Lord, please help my unbelief. 
Lord, please help my unbelief. Now, how many of y'all in here today believe in the name of Jesus Christ? All right, let's do that again one more time, y'all. How many of us today believe in the name of Jesus Christ? Hey, praise God. I want to be thankful for that today because uh, we're not saved until uh, we believe on that holy name. And I'm thankful today to know uh, that he loves all of us. But how many also today struggle in our lives? We all struggle, don't we? We struggle on this and we struggle on that. We be going to church, we reading our Bibles, we're singing songs, we're praying. But still, regardless of doing all of that, we have struggles, don't we? It's not that we don't believe in Jesus Christ. It's simply that we have a little unbelief. And you say, wait a minute, I don't know about unbelief. But we're going to break this down today to understand uh, that it's not that we don't believe, but it's that our belief becomes weak. Our belief becomes out of shape a little bit. We get out of groove a little bit. Have y'all ever said in your mind, I need to get back in the groove of things? Anybody ever said that? You know, I've been, I've been out a little bit and I need to get back in the groove of things a little bit. Well, the same thing happens with our belief. It's not that you don't believe. You're a saved child of God. You're washed in the blood. You believe in Jesus. But I still struggle. I still have some rough days. Sometimes my prayer don't work like I think it should. So I'm going to ask God today to help my unbelief. We're going to be in the Bible this morning. We're going to be in uh, uh, St. Mark chapter 9. And you know, this morning I was watching my computer today, listening to gospel music. And I seemed like it was, uh, I was, uh, the time just wasn't moving. And I was thanking God, you know, I was like, you know, thank you, Lord. I ain't got a rush today. Time seems like it's, it's going really slow. So I look over at my watch and it said the same thing it did 30 minutes ago. And I was like, oh my goodness. I picked up my watch and you know the thing wasn't ticking. It wasn't working a bit. So I look over at the computer and it said 15 till 9. And I thought, oh no, my watch has quit. So I was actually running behind. So I got here today, I've I done this to a couple of people, said my watch broke this morning. I had no problem getting a watch on the podium today uh, for me to look at. Uh, so we're gonna be on time today, amen? Uh, but if you'd stand with me today for the reading of God's holy precious word out of St. Mark chapter nine, starting with verse 19, uh, to kind of get us in the setting today, uh, just in our old country boy language, I guess you would say, uh, there was this man here and that he had brought his son. He had brought his son to the disciples of Jesus. His son was possessed uh, with, uh, with some evil spirits and the disciples could not cast these spirits out. Could not do it. So he came straight to Jesus. And let's see what Jesus had to say to him. Jesus had to say here in verse 19, he answered him and saith, O faithless generation." How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him to him. And when he saw him straightway, the spirit tore him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and to the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. And I thank the Lord for the reading of his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, today for your word, God. Father, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for the shed blood of Jesus on the cross at Calvary. And God, we humbly pray today 
God, that you'll take your word and anoint it, humble our hearts and draw us to you today. God, we believe in you this morning. We believe in Jesus. We believe in the resurrection. But Father, as we go through this life, God, we can put ourselves in this Father's shoes today. Sometimes, Lord, we fail. Sometimes we fall short. Sometimes, God, we may have unbelief. So, Father, we ask you today to help us with that unbelief. But, Father, we pray most of all, God, if there's one in our midst today, Lord, and God is still lost in a dying condition, this will be a day, God, your Holy Spirit will draw them to that day of salvation. God, forgive us all for our sins. Lift up the name of Jesus, we pray in that name. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated today. Lord, please help my unbelief. Now we've all admitted today uh, that we have times of, of weakness and times of trial. Uh, times where we just uh, maybe sometimes feel like uh, we're not accomplishing anything. Do y'all realize today that the, the moment you become saved, uh, the moment you become washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, the devil has come into your life and trying to make you believe that that didn't even happen. That didn't even happen. Do y'all believe that today? A man that just got washed in the blood of Jesus on a Sunday morning before he gets back to church the very next week the devil's done got in there and done beat him around and tried to make him believe nothing ever happened. Nothing ever happened. That's how strong the devil is in this world. That's how strong he is. But we're here today. We're going to church. We've been singing songs. We've been reading scriptures. We've been praying but how many out there this past week have struggled in your faith? Struggled in our faith. We've struggled to trust in God. We've struggled, struggled to have faith that everything's going to be okay. Regardless of what the, uh, the government is saying, and uh, we know it's all wrong sometimes, everything's still going to be okay. We struggle in our faith, don't we? We do struggle in our faith. You know, but I like what Jesus says here. If you go back to verse number uh, uh, 19, he saith unto him, uh, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Do y'all ever feel like Jesus Christ is uh, looking down on you in your life? And say, O oh, faithless, O oh, faithless. I confess to you today, I have felt the Lord uh, look down at me and say, oh boy, uh, uh, where is your faith? Has God ever looked at you and said, where is your faith? Man, he's done it to me many times. I guess I'm the only one in the house that has a little doubt every now and then. Don't we all have times where we fall in our faith, where we doubt? Yes, we do, y'all. Yes, we do. Well, I don't want to confess that in front of the church. They'll think less of me. Well, you know what? Sometimes in life, it's about you. Amen. And salvation is about you today. Growing in Jesus Christ is about you today. Amen. The person on the other side of the church can't save you. I can't save you, but Jesus Christ can save you. Amen. Jesus Christ can help you through these doubtful times in our lives. These times when we look up and say, Lord, will you please help my unbelief today? Will you please help my unbelief today? I know Jesus has looked down on me many times and said, boy, where is your faith? Don't you know I've done this for you? Don't you know I've done that for you? Where is your faith? Now, if we'll go to verse 23, I want to concentrate on that for a moment. Verse 23 says, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Do we believe that today? Amen. All things are possible to him that believeth. And you may be thinking in your mind, well, you know, this is pretty powerful. What this is not meaning, this is not meaning that you can become uh, some kind of a, a magician. That's not what it means. You know, God don't even have a desire for us to, uh, to become musicians. No. What this means is faith can give you everything you need to serve the Lord 
with joy and gladness in our lives. Do we always serve the Lord in joy and gladness? No. no. How many of y'all got up this morning and said, oh, got to get ready for church. Anybody in here done that? Anybody sighed in your house today? Anybody blew in your house today? Oh, anybody ever done that? I've done it, but not today. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> anybody ever said, well, I got to go to church today because I don't want to explain why I wasn't there next week. Anybody ever done that? Yes. Amen. 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 Hey, we all do it, don't we? To a certain extent, maybe in different areas. I guess some of us think we're all perfect and righteous. I don't know, but you know, we're really not. We all fall short of the glory of God, don't we? Amen. Just because you're not guilty of one thing don't mean you're not guilty of the other. And if you think you're not guilty of the other, you're guilty for judging the one that is guilty. Right. Amen. Amen. So there is not a perfect person in the house, but guess who else is here? Jesus, Jesus Christ. He's here, isn't he? He is in the room. I like that. I heard this song, and I've been jamming to that song every Thursday. I played it in church Thursday morning. You say, church Thursday morning? Yeah, I have church on Thursdays in my house by myself with the Lord. Amen. I sure do. It's my day off most of the times, and, and I tell you what, I, I'm really enjoying it a whole lot. Amen. Good, amen. I hey, praise God, Miss Janice. Amen. It feels good. It really does. I get loud at home, too. Yeah, I sure do, praise God. And nobody can get irritated at me that day. Sure can't. No. But yeah, I listen to a lot of music. I like music. I love music. I love hearing, hearing people sing. Those anointing great voices of God, you know. Uh, Brother Mike, I love hearing you sing. Praise God for that, amen. Everybody that sings in here, Mr. Lord, God bless you for singing. You know, God bless that. But what I'm trying to say, y'all, is Jesus is here today. And He's looking down upon you. And He knows how hard this life is. See, the Bible, don't, the Bible preaches that uh, we do not have a high priest that don't know our infirmities. He, don't, he knows how you feel today. You're not alone. You're not alone in your spirit this morning. God knows how you feel. And He knows that you have weaknesses. He knows that you struggle sometimes. But you know what? He loves you still. He loves you still. And we need to be like this, uh, uh, this father here. This father had brought his son uh, to the disciples uh, and the disciples, uh, uh, they didn't have the faith uh, in order to, to, to cast out the devils and the demons. So he went straight to Jesus. Have y'all ever, ever come to the preacher and thought, well, hey, I want the preacher to pray for me and it'll all be okay. And nothing ever happened? Anybody ever done it? You ain't got to say yes, okay, because I don't hear it today. But let me tell you something. Preacher, just a preacher. Take it to Jesus. Amen. Take it to Jesus Christ. Because you, you can pray to Jesus just like I can. And He hears your prayer just like He hears mine. Just like He hears mine. Now, moving on, I want, I want to concentrate on that for just a moment though, y'all. Uh, verse 23 says, you know, uh, what about all these things like joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness? Don't we all have problems with these things? But is it possible today that it's not these things we have the problem with? It's simply believing. Is simply believing. Can't we break all these things down to one problem? <coughs> simply believing. Well, I believe. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, whosoever shall believe in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. I believe. Why am I struggling? Simply because you're normal. <laughs> and you're struggling. On a day-to-day -day basis, trying to get through the life of trials. But let's not say I have a joy problem. I have a, I have a, a, a patience problem. I have a temperance problem. I have an anxiety problem. Let's say I have a belief problem. And Lord, will you please help my unbelief? Lord, please help my unbelief. That's what we need to do today. Lord, please help my unbelief. 
I'm looking at my thing and there ain't nothing on my wrist. Y'all pray for me today. All right, now verse 24 says, And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help mine unbelief. How many times have y'all ever been in those very shoes? Lord, I believe, but will you help my unbelief? Hadn't we all been there? Hadn't we all been there? Now moving on. Think about this for a moment now. What does an athlete do before he goes to a, before he starts playing a ball or, or whatever he does, running a marathon or, or whatever they might do? What do they do? They make sure they're in shape, don't they? They make sure they're in shape. If I'm going to get down here and play basketball with these kids, I better get myself in shape before I do it because I'm going to be very out of shape if I do it unconditioned. Unconditioned. And that's where we fall into the category. We're fighting the old devil out there in the world unconditioned. And we need to get in shape. We need to get in the groove of things. It's not that I don't believe. It's simply that I'm out of shape. I need to get back in the groove of things. Because the devil, he's in good shape. The devil's in good shape out there to, uh, ramping over our lives and making us mad and, and getting us all depressed and full of hatred and anxiety and all these things. We need to get spiritually back in shape, amen, and realize that there is a battle going on out there that we do battle against powers and principalities and, and things we know not of every day of our lives. Lord, help my unbelief. Amen. I need you every day of my life. I need you to help my unbelief today. I believe, Lord. See, this was a good old guy. He, you know, he had a son there and uh, his son was messed up and, and he took the son to the disciples. They couldn't help. So then he took his son straight to Jesus. And what did he say to Jesus? He said, Lord, I believe you. He believed Jesus so much that he came to Jesus. Follow me now. We're here today, ain't we? We've came to Jesus. But he confessed. But Lord, will you help my unbelief? Basically, will you make me believe better? Will you get me back in spiritual shape? How about that? Spiritual shape. Do y'all know y'all going to leave this place today? You're going to go out in the world and you're going to fight the devil. Yeah, you are. No, bro, Johnny, I'm going to go home. I'm going to sit in my recliner and take a nap and watch TV. I'm not going to fight the devil. If you turn that thing on in your living room, you're fighting temptation. You turn that cell phone on, if you got it on right now, I want you to know you're fighting the devil. <laughs> Hate to put it that way, but that's just the way it is. The devil's got ways, don't he? The devil's got ways. And we're going to battle him. But I want to ask you today, are you conditioned? Are you in shape? Are you ready? Because I don't want to go up against the devil half-heartedly. Because the devil's coming up with you with all he's got. He's coming up with you through your family, through your husband, through your wife, through your kids, through the TV. He's coming. Are you ready for Him? Are you conditioned? Are you in shape? Are you spiritually strong? Or are you like me and this old man? Lord, I believe. But will you help my unbelief? Will you help my unbelief? You know, if there's a football team right there, and I know we a lot of stuff as football people. I like watching football, you know. And uh, Anyway, but uh, uh, you know who the... You know who the coach gets off the bench to put in the game? The one that he feels like has been practicing the hardest and is ready. And is ready. And you're all on the bench today. Jesus Christ is the coach. If he had to put somebody in the game right now, would he choose you? Would he choose you this morning? Or would you have to say, no, Lord, wait a minute, Lord, I believe now. I believe, but will you help my unbelief first? Will you get me back into shape? Will you get me spiritually strong? 
where the old devil can't just knock me out right off the bat. Makes a little sense that way, doesn't it? We got to get back in shape. You know, we've been through COVID. Lots of people's been uh, out for a long time. Yes, we've been going to church in our living room. Hey, I got called to preach in my living room. Praise God for living room church. I had living room church Thursday. I praise the Lord for it. You know, I do. But still, we've been out. We've been out. So we need to look back to God now and say, God, I believe. But I want you to get me back on fire for you. I want you to get me back in shape today. I want you to make that smile on my face much bigger. Praise the Lord. I want you to make that smile on my face real and not just a church face. Anybody know what a church face is? We all know what church face is. We all got one today, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. I've gotten good at my church faces. I really have. I can be at work all day long just having a horrible day. One of my church people can show up and I got the smile going on. I'm blessed today. Amen. But don't we all want that to be real? Amen. Don't we all want that to be real? I don't want that to be fake. I really don't, you know. And some days I have to fake it. You know, I'm faking. I'm winging it today. Anybody ever wing it out there? Let's give God some praise. Amen. Let's give Him some praise. Lord, I believe. But will you help my unbelief today? Help my unbelief, Lord. I believe you so much. I believe you died on that cross for me and shed that blood. I believe. But God, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Will you help my unbelief? Will you help my unbelief? Moving on this morning, I want to move on today. Uh, now, uh, what, think about this for a moment. You know, uh, uh, we have a physical and spiritual being sitting right where you are, right? There's two of you right there. You said, no, there's just one. No, there's two. There's a physical and a spiritual being sitting right where you are. Now, how many of you as you grow older are realizing that your physical is not in as good a shape as it was when you were younger? I finally got a church to say amen today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just turned 49, y'all. Uh, uh, trust me. You say, well, you're just a young timer compared to me. Yes, but I'm crowding that time when you can remember way back, okay? And that you say, yeah, you are probably starting to wake up and realize you're not as young as you once was. So as we go older physically, we are going to go downhill. That's just the way it is. Amen? Amen. But what about spiritually? Seems to me like that should be the opposite. As I grow older spiritually, I should become spiritually stronger, feel spiritually better, a little more conditioned. Amen? Heck, I done been through everything, lost all my hair. I am spiritually strong today. How many of y'all older people are more spiritually strong than us young folks? Praise God, you've been through more. Amen? You've walked through more trials. You've been through more temptations. You've been whipped more than we have. Praise God. And you've just become better, spiritually stronger. So generation of mine, I'm talking to you. Are we ready to take those shoes? Are we growing in our spiritual strength? Are we conditioning ourselves spiritually? Oh, we can do it all day long. Physically, I can eat right and take Geritol every day. You know, praise God. Do the best I can. But am I doing the best I can spiritually today? Am I being honest with myself? Am I being honest with the Lord? And saying, Lord, I believe you. But will you help my unbelief? Maybe you're one God's wanting to call out to the game. Get off the bench. I believe He's going to condition you and have you ready first. What do you think? What do you think? Let's see what Jesus done to this old death and dumb spirit. Uh, you know, I tell you, y'all believe in spirits today or am I going to get fired for saying uh, demons and spirits up here this morning? We all believe in that? We all believe in that, don't we? Well, that's a little far-fetched for our world, Brother Johnny. We got YouTube. We got G5 Internet. We got all, or 5G or whatever that is. You know, you can't be talking about evil stuff in a pulpit. Hey, I'm here to worship in spirit and truth. Praise God, I'm not of this world. I believe in those things. I believe in spirits. I believe in powers, places we know not of. I believe in these things. 
Not going to become very popular talking about them, for sure. But that's okay. It's not a popularity contest, is it? That's right. Amen? It's a truth thing. Jesus says here in 25, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked that foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and dead spirit, I charge thee. Come out of him and enter no more unto him. He charged that spirit, didn't he? What do y'all think today? Y'all think there's some things in our lives we need to charge in the name of Jesus? You ever thought about that today? You ever thought, let's get real this morning. Is there things in our lives that we need a, a charge in the name of Jesus? But before we do that, before we get serious, we need to make sure that we're spiritually strong. Because when we do those things, the devil's going to come a-running, right? How about we look at sadness and say, sadness, I charge you in the name of Jesus. How about we do that? How about we look at anger and say, I charge you anger in the name of Jesus. Hatred, I charge you in the name of Jesus. Anxiety, I charge you in the name of Jesus. Greed, I charge you in the name of Jesus. Selfishness, I charge you in the name of Jesus. Alcoholism, I charge you in the name of Jesus. Homosexuality, I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ. America needs to stand up and start charging these things in the name of Jesus. But America's not going to do it so God's people, it comes down on us to charge these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. He's calling the church out today. Amen. All over the world, we got to start charging these things in the name of Jesus. Yes, we do. But we better be spiritually strong when we do it. Because the devil's not going to be happy, is he? So Lord... I believe, but will you help my unbelief? I believe this country needs revival with all my heart. The things that were against God years ago are still against God today. The Word of God has not changed. But God's calling the people out. He so said, I just want to go to church, sit on a pew, and listen to you scream and holler, Jesus. That's good with me. How do you know it's good with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? How do you know He's not calling you out where you live? How do you know He's not calling you out where you work? How do you know He's not calling you out to be the spiritual leader of your family? Are we conditioned today? Are we ready this morning? Because this country needs revival. This community needs revival. Amen. This church needs revival. Amen. Brother Johnny needs revival. Amen. Amen. Praise God, y'all. Let's give God praise today. We need to be ready. I believe, Lord, but will you help my unbelief today? Will you help my unbelief? You know, I remember... <laughs> I remember God calling me to preach. and Boy, I tell you what. Whew, that was a struggle. But I knew I couldn't do it. But I knew He could through me. I knew He could through me if He chose to. And obviously for this long He has. He got me off the bench. Put me in the game. But I want you to know something. The enemy's team in our nation seems to be a little bit bigger than God's team here lately. What do y'all think? It's time for y'all to realize that God might be calling you. God may be saying, it's your time. It's your time to start charging things in the name of Jesus. It's your time to stand up for God, for your family, for yourself. It's time to get the things out of our own eyes first before we start judging everybody else and what's going on in theirs. How many of us get guilty of that sometimes? Don't we all fall short and, and do that sometimes? You know, uh, I, I, I've been convicted so many times, uh, especially being a preacher. 
look over here. Uh, so especially being a preacher, you know. Man, I done been preaching for so many years. Man, I, I got the suit on. I got the tie. I got the nice haircut. Man, I'm bona fide. Praise the Lord. Stand up here and preach. Tell you what's wrong. <laughs> I tell you what's wrong. We're all sinners saved by God's grace. We all fall short of the glory of God. I don't care how pretty the suit is. Amen. Amen. Hey, praise the Lord. And we all need to make sure we're conditioned and ready and spiritually strong to go out there and fight an evil devil that's in this world. Because it's real, brother. Ain't no fake. It ain't no show. He's out there trying to devour our lives. And if we're not washed in the precious blood of the Lamb, when we take that last breath, we'll go straight to hell for all eternity. And that's the truth. And Jesus Christ loves you this morning. He wants you to know that whether you want to admit it or not, you do have times of unbelief. You do have times of struggle. You do have times of trial. You do have times to where you don't take it serious enough. I do. But Jesus still loves you like He always has. He knows you have times of doubt. Maybe you're like this fella today. And you need to say, Lord, I believe. But will you help my unbelief? Working towards your close, we'll go over to Philippians. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 this morning. If you go over there for just a moment, I'd like to read uh, verses 9 uh, through 11 in Philippians 2, 9. Now let's remember this guy today. Uh, let's remember this dad. How many believe in Jesus? But you know, he didn't have the faith to cast out that demon on his own, did he? He didn't, but he believed. Sometimes in our lives, you know, we believe, but we don't have the faith to quit what we're doing. We don't have the faith to repent. We don't have the faith to help somebody in a situation. Maybe we need to come back to God and say, Lord, I believe, but will you help my unbelief? You say, will it work? Well, it will if you do it in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says in verse 9, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow all things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. That everything should bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Things aren't going to bow to the name of Johnny Dalton. Things aren't going to bow to the name of Mount Aret. Things aren't going to name to the uh, name of Presbyterian. Things will bow to the name of Jesus Christ because His name is above every name. I charge sadness. I charge uh, unjoyfulness. I charge anxiety. I charge uh, 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 being addicted to things. I charge greed and selfishness in the name of Jesus. How about y'all today? Yeah. I charge denomination in the name of Jesus today because I believe it separated the body of Christ. Amen. How many of y'all believe that? Amen. I believe that today. And I believe God's going to have a revival in this nation and this world before He comes and marries the bride. Because I believe He'll have the bride dressed up and ready for Him. What do y'all think? Are you conditioned today? Are you ready to meet the Lord? Are you ready to meet the Lord? I've said this before and I'll say it again because I just, God's laid it on my heart. I remember when my little girl got married, man, we spent a whole week preparing her and getting her ready for 30 minutes. <laughs> we sure did. Yes, we did. But man, let me tell you something. There wasn't a hair out of spot. There was not a blemish on that dress. For 30 minutes. All that work, man. Put on some coveralls and say, I do. And get her done. You know? Jesus Christ. My message got verified in Sunday school today. Jesus Christ is the groom. This church is the bride. Not just Mount Ararat, but it's all those all over the world that are redeemed and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I believe with all my heart, 
But God is preparing a wedding. I don't know if it'll be tomorrow, next week, or a thousand years. Nobody knows that but the Father. But I believe with all my heart, He's going to start getting the church ready. Are you ready? Are you ready this morning? Are you prepared? Every one of us have appointed time. Some of us in this very church we won't live long enough to see that rapture. But you're still going to meet the Lord. Everyone in this church, are you conditioned? Are you ready? Or maybe you're like this old feller. He came straight to Jesus. We've came today. Every one of us. And we believe. But do we need to say, Lord, I believe. But will you please help my unbelief? Will you please condition in me? Will you please make sure I'm ready when I go out there to this spiritual war? Are you ready today? As our music comes and we stand this morning, only you and Jesus know your heart today. Is there something in your life you're battling and you believe you've been battling it for years and years and years? Maybe it's forgiveness. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's anxiety. Uh, maybe it's just a being on fire for God. Maybe it's just a desire to serve Him. Are you that fellow today or that lady today that looking to God and saying, Lord, please, will you help my belief, my unbelief? Maybe God's speaking to you as we pray. Heavenly Father, God, we humble our hearts today, Lord, and we thank You for Your Word. And God, you know, I can go on and on and on. And, uh, Lord, uh, but Your Word says it all. I can make a mess up here, but Your Word will not come back void. And Your Word tells us that even this father back in the day had unbelief, even though he believed and he struggled. God, we believe in You today, but maybe somebody's struggling like myself. Will you please help our unbelief? Would you help us to believe today that if you're knocking on our heart, that it's you? Maybe there's someone in here today, God, who needs to come and ask Jesus to come into their heart. Maybe there's someone in here today, God, you're calling to rededicate their life. Maybe, God, you're calling somebody to join this church. Father, maybe you're calling somebody, God, to pray for somebody else. Help us, God, in our unbelief. In Jesus' name, amen.